and we are rolling. So again, welcome to Hawk's Eye View. I'm going to have the professors go ahead and give you an introduction, um, some of the classes that they teach, as well as their favorite course. So um, Professor Breeden, if you want to lead us off. All right. Um, yeah, I'm Jennifer Breeden. This is my ninth year at Quincy University. Um, I teach a variety of things. Business statistics is usually when most business majors first see me in class. Um, and then I teach uh, in the management area, operations management. I teach a transportation um, management class and um, personal finance, small business management. And I would say my favorite class would be small business management. I've been an entrepreneur for many years and um, that's something I, I feel like I can offer a lot of personal advice, <laughs> maybe sometimes what not to do um, in that. So that, that class is probably my favorite. Thank you. Dr. Walker, how about you? Yes, my name is Dana Walker. I, um, I teach uh, principles of management, organizational behavior, and business analytics. Uh, I've been with Quincy University for five years. Prior, the year prior to Quincy, I, teach, I taught at uh, Shanghai University Economics uh, and Business. And prior to that, I worked for a large uh, corporation for 25 years. My favorite classes are really different because of the different formats. I like business analytics strategic management, organizational behavior. Uh, we use uh, computer simulations in the strategic management class. Thank you, Dr. Edson. Hi, I'm Vicki Edson. I teach uh, the accounting classes. So in the lower level accounting classes are all business majors. And then as they get up to the upper, upper level, it's only accounting majors, I would say. Um, I have several classes I enjoy, but the intermediate accounting where I have both finance and accounting majors is, is probably one of my favorite. Um, there's lots of students in there and they all by that time are interacting very well. Great. And Dr. Cruz? Well, I am Dr. Cruz. I came to Quincy University in fall 2019. Um, I teach courses in, in the healthcare concentration um, different courses, healthcare law, healthcare policy, ethics, um, business sectors in health, but I also teach for the undergrad, um, uh, human resource management um, for professionals as well, and also some independent courses whenever it is needed in terms of the healthcare. Um, the class that I like the most, um, I really like several of those courses, um, but if I need to pick one, it could be a healthcare policy, um, basically because it's the first one many students take and I get to know my students. And then from there, it's much, much easier, the type of interaction that I can have with them. Thank you. And before I have Brianna ask her question, I just wanted to see Nolan, I know you have a general interest in business. Is there a certain concentration that you feel drawn to yet? My specific interest right now is um, I'm mainly looking into accounting right now, but I mean, it's just mainly accounting right now, I'd say, but I mean, if it ends up changing for some reason, then you know, I can go into that, but mainly it's accounting at the moment. Ooh, Dr. Edson's probably loving that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, the first question actually goes out to Dr. Edson, um, and it is what majors are offered in the School of Business that weren't mentioned, um, you know, through everyone saying their favorite courses, are there any uh, questions or any majors that are offered, um, you know, that you can let us know about? All right, well, I'm just going to list them all, whether somebody <laughs> mentioned them or not. Um, we have uh, accounting. We have a, a new major business analytics, which Dr. Walker will talk about in just a little bit. We have finance, we have management and marketing. Um, the core classes for each of those areas is uh, very much the same. And then uh, towards your junior year, they'll split off and you'll have some you know, different courses for each major. We also have minors in accounting, finance, management, marketing, and entrepreneurship is a, is a minor area. We do also have an MBA with uh, four different concentration areas, which is a general MBA, organizational leadership, operations management, and healthcare administration. Thank you. 
And you had mentioned the newest major, which is business analytics, of course. Um, Dr. Walker, can you really describe that to us and also careers it prepares students for? Sure. Business analytics is really exciting. Um, it's really an extension of our ability to have big data and capture a lot of data, both in a retail environment and a supply chain, that sort of thing. So there's much more sophisticated tools that lets businesses learn how to optimize their business, how to uh, optimize their routing. So for example, FedEx or UPS or Prime will manage their uh, fleets using business analytics. Uh, in accounting, it's getting to the point that there's doing a lot of auditing with business analytics. So it's an exciting area. If you like accounting and finance, uh, you'll like business analytics also. But also if you're a marketing student, then business analytics are good. So some of the jobs are like an operational analyst, a logistics planner, somebody that's on a finance or treasury staff, a supply chain uh, manager, uh, production optimization, personal financial advisors and financial analysts, business and, uh, in, intelligent analysts and business analyst specials, specialist. And one of the things I suggest is go out to something like indeed.com, put in business analytics and just see how many thousands of jobs are out there because it is an exciting way to really differentiate their business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, also, Dr. Walker, I know we were kind of talking about some of the most, the more unique courses, but what are some other um, courses that you think are kind of uh, pretty unique to QU? Well, I think the healthcare management uh, courses that uh, Dr. Cruz teaches, and of course, I think the business analytic ones are really interesting, but uh, Jennifer teaches a course in a small business management where they uh, uh, do elevator talks. She also has one where they do a, a competition with supply chain. And then of course I like mine that have the computer simulations. Uh, I get feedback from all my students that it really isn't just conceptual ideas. It isn't just terms. It's actually sitting down and see if you can run a business in a competitive environment. And they really like the hands-on exper experiential uh, way of doing that. Uh, the other thing here at Quincy that we have that I think really helps out, makes our courses very interesting is that not only do we have the full-time faculty, but we also have uh, adjunct faculty that are out of industry. So for example, in our money and banking class, the president of one of the local banks actually teaches that class. Our supply chain manager was an executive with a company that was very successful with supply chain. And even our business law and business ethics class are taught by a local lawyer. So it's people that are out in practice doing this real life stuff. <laughs> and they bring that into the classroom. Even myself, I, before I started teaching full-time, I worked for a Fortune 100 for 25 years. So it really does apply. And so the classes are more than just, these are the terms, these are the concepts. It's really how do we put them together and, and make business decisions and, and grow the business. Mm -hmm. And Nolan, the nice thing for you too is coming from John Wood, um, you know, 40% of our transfer class every year is coming from that school. So um, your courses will really transfer very seamlessly, which is great. Um, and then you'll be able to just work right alongside your advisor to making sure that you graduate on time. Um, Professor Breeden, who actually, who is the advisor for the students? Can you let him know and, you know, how do they stay on track to graduate? Sure. Uh, when somebody declares their major in, the, in one of the business areas and they're matched up with a full-time faculty member to be their <clears> advisor. <throat> so uh, I believe each of us on here uh, advise several students and you're able to, I think, it's a really great process where we use, uh, we have what's called success by design. We use degree checklists and then the degree audits are all tools that we use. I personally like to sit down with a degree audit each time I meet with the student where we're really kind of talking about their plan and it helps just make sure we're on track. And one thing I'd like to share too is like comparing QU to maybe other places. I went to a very, very large undergraduate university. I didn't even know who my advisor was. And so it's so neat for me um, to be able to we really get to know our students and it's a much more personal process for students can drop in and you know talk about what their plan is and what they want to do and maybe they want to change their major i was one of those students that thought i wanted to be one thing and i decided i wanted to be something else uh, i changed from engineering to accounting and um you know i think through qu you get a, a good opportunity to sit down get to know us as your advisors and really you know stay on track and, and get, you know, point in the direction that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely agree with you as an alum. Um, you know, when you get the syllabi at the beginning of the year and it says, here's my office hours, that's not just a lie. That's not a statement they have to put on there. Um, they truly do have open door policy for their office hours. And um, with the small class ratios and things, it's, it's great to be able to know your professor. And the fact that your advisor is your professor is so helpful when you're looking for possible internships or um, career opportunities because they have some natural networks they can maybe shoot you down a pipeline, which is great. True. And in regards to graduation, um, Dr. Walker, are, is there a requirement for internships in order to graduate? No, you don't have to have an internship, but it is recommended. It looks really good on your resume. Plus you get experience about a real job. These are paid internships and they're typically in your area that you wanna do, uh, that you wanna practice. So for example, you, if you wanna be in finance, you may work for a financial advisor for your junior semester part-time, or you may actually work for them over the summer. We've had some marketing students that have actually gone down to Chesterfield, Missouri and California and actually worked in marketing roles. So they know what they're getting into. They get a real feel for what the job's like. And many of these actually lead to full-time employment. So they, they learn the intern's name. They know how they work. Uh, they, the intern knows the company. And so we've had a lot of them that have gone directly out of the internships, graduated and went right into the work relationship with them. We also work with a the department called the Quest Center and they do things like help design your resume and line up the uh, opportunities for the internships and make sure everything's going well with that. So that's a real good resource at QU. Great, and um, Dr. Edson, especially with Nolan being from the Quincy area, what are some internships that you've seen students do within maybe a 40 mile radius? All right, so we have um, several firms in the area that simply email the Career Center and myself each year or each semester looking for interns. And so some of those are um, the, the more, the ones that are repetitive each year, Dot Foods has some over the summer, they have a great internship program. Uh, Prince Agri Products um, has a great internship program. Some of the local CPA firms um, like Gray Hunter Sten and uh, Arnold Barron Steeters and Gray also have internships. But we're just not limited to locally. So if you go, you know, find the one someplace else that you would like to, you know, apply to. We would help you prepare your resume. Kind of, you can kind of ask us. We might not have um, kind of the, I guess, uh, the request from the firm like we do from the local firms. But certainly, we've had students get them um, all over the United States. And um, for on campus, like. Um, business specific clubs and organizations. Professor Breeden, if you could talk a little bit about what kind of clubs and organizations are on campus that might be business related. Yeah, we have uh, some really great opportunities. Uh, IMA um, for accounting. We have uh, the Entrepreneurship Club, which is CEO, uh, which I want to stress there's a lot of business majors and that are not just entrepreneurial focused, you know, marketing majors and management majors, accounting, finance, they're all in that club. That club is very active and, and doing a lot of things in the community. Um, and a lot of times these different organizations will uh, allow us to invite in guest speakers that are associated with them, um, go on tours, do mock interviews and things like that. And I usually encourage, uh, especially management majors to you know, have a student membership to like uh, the supply chain management organizations and things, because all those things look really good on your resume when you're leaving college that you, you were a member of those, uh, of those larger organizations. And then um, kind of following up to that, other than like the clubs and organizations on campus, do you guys offer any like um, field trips, events, or guest speakers, something that's, you know, additional hands-on career prep opportunities? Yes, definitely. We have a, uh, a lot of opportunities to go on uh, tours of facilities, but uh, guest speakers, yes, in the area, a lot of guest speakers are more than willing to come in in a variety of areas. Um, in my small business class, I have a lot of uh, people with different business backgrounds, even attorneys have came in and helped judge my elevator pitch competition 
that uh, is actually part of a national competition that you can go on and compete on. Um, but what we try to do too is provide things in the classroom that again, you can put on your resume. We have our academic symposium that goes on in the spring. I stress to students that doing the research projects and things for that uh, are great things to put on your resume. My market research class right now has an actual client that they're doing a marketing portfolio, marketing projects for, and those are all things you can definitely, um, you know, tell a future employer about in an interview, so. Yeah, definitely. And if you're interested in viewing any of those academic symposium um, reports, all of that actually was virtual last year due to the pandemic and it's on our YouTube page. Um, so if you check out our channel, you can see a lot of those, um, that research material that the students did. Um, and this is a great question for you because again, specifically uh, for accounting majors, Dr. Edson, what ways can they complete their 150 hours that's needed to sit for the CPA exam? Okay, so uh, before we talk about the 150 hours, um, there are sort there are more than two paths, but there are two common paths that people refer to as a career in accounting, public accounting and private accounting. So we have a lot of graduates who graduate with the required 120 degree, 120 hours for their degree and go work for a firm, um, for instance, be the accountant at Quincy University or General Motors or John Deere, et cetera, et cetera. You don't necessarily have to have a CPA to be an accountant, okay? But another career path is a certified public accountant and that career path, you do have to have your CPA. And there's a lot of benefits to even getting your CPA if you never go into public accounting because it's, it's just something someone can't take away from you. You always have that on your resume, et cetera. And um, so there's, to sit for the CPA exam, you have to have 150 college credit hours. At Quincy University, as an undergraduate, you would graduate with 120. So that means you need 30 more credit hours. So there's three common ways to get that. Um, one of the, a good way would be to get a master's degree. A master's degree is 30 credit hours. So that fits in nicely with it. And we have an MBA program that I referred to earlier um, that some students choose. Another um, option is to actually get the 150 hours while attending Quincy University. And so um, if you have brought in some high school credit hours, a lot of times transfers from John Wood might take something like sociology that doesn't necessarily count for a business major, it still counts for hours, but all those extra hours that you have taken anywhere count. Because at Quincy University, we do provide the accounting and business hours you need, just not the, 100, the 150 wouldn't be a degree requirement for an undergraduate. So. Some students um, get a double major while they attend, go to summer school, have brought in some, uh, some high school credits, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have others that simply get as close to the 150 hours as possible. So if you think about it, um, 18 hours a semester for eight, sem for eight semesters. So 18 times eight would get you to 144. You're only six short, okay? And 18 hours is still considered a full-time student. So in that case, we would say, okay, you can take any six hours, go back to John Wood for six hours, take an extra class at Quincy University over the summer, you know, for two, three hour classes, et cetera, move to someplace, get a job, take the six hours at a junior college anywhere there. So there's several ways, but just know the extra 30 hours are sort of your choice because we give you the accounting and business requirements to sit for the CPA exam, you would just need the extra 30 hours. And those are some options. Great, and you kind of talked a little bit about um, master's programs as well. And um, I thought it would be a good segue into this question. And this is for Dr. Cruz. Um, if you could explain kind of the benefits of getting that master's of business you know, administration from QU. And I know you're in the healthcare concentration. So if you want to expand on that a little bit as well. That's a great question. Um, I have seen healthcare in so many different departments in other schools. Um, and sometimes you can just see them in different concentrations, I mean, in different departments, but having it in a business school will add more to it. 
you know, you can also work in so many different places. I mean, you can work in the nonprofit organizations. Um, you can also be in the public sector or in many different positions, government positions. But you can also be a, a private. Um, for instance, you can work as an office manager. You can also be a um, nurse managers because sometimes people like the nursing field, but they don't want to be a nurse. So this option is really good because you have more than just one option there. So you can work still in some kind of nursing position, but at the same time doing more of administrator. So I would say that the benefits of having it here, um, Quincy University plus in the School of Business is, is just give you so many different ways for you to work in so many places that you would really like to work. And the nice thing too that I'll add Nolan is um, you can do your MBA at QU completely online, um, which is so nice. For you know, when you graduate, if you obviously need money at that point and want to get a job, um, you can still continue with your education at the place you know and love, and with some of the professors you know and love, um, and getting your MBA online. So just keep that in mind. Um, and when you are a senior, you can start the application process. And with our accelerated uh, bachelor's to master's program, you actually can take, I believe it's up to six credit hours as a senior at the undergraduate rate. Um, and so that way you can kind of get yourself a head start, which is nice. Um, I'm gonna aim this question at Professor Breeden, but please anyone feel free to jump in if you would like. Uh, what jobs is a student prepared for after graduation if they graduate with a business degree? What are some alumni examples, maybe in your respective areas that you can talk about? Yeah, uh, our alumni work in a lot of different areas uh, worldwide and certainly within the US. Um, from the accounting perspective, uh, we have graduates that are large multinational CPA firms. Um, we have some of the local firms working in industry at Dot Foods, Gardner Denver, and things like that. Uh, we've had marketing graduates go on to Gardner Denver, um, supply chain, logistics, management related careers at, say, Titan Wheel for looking at local. Um, We've also had a couple of recent graduates that went into real estate. Uh, we have one uh, that graduated last year that worked for the GLBC, which is our uh, athletic um, um, what am I trying to think of? conference. conference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> our athletic conference um, that was a, a management marketing major. So I mean, there's really so many endless possibilities um, to either stay local or to uh, to explore and go elsewhere too. Yeah, we had uh, we've had students that not only the business school, but one went into the seminary. Another one became a professional pitcher for the Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays, and we also had another one that went to graduate school to become a hospital administrator at Xavier University. So uh, it really prepares you for the next level uh, wherever you want to go from a career perspective. Well, this is actually kind of a fun question um, for Dr. Walker. What would you say sets QU business graduates apart from others? Well, one of the things we do is when you're a senior, you get to take this dreaded uh, educational testing service major field study class test. It's a comprehensive th test that says how much you know about business. But there's about a thousand universities that give this standardized test that's actually graded by ETS. And what's amazing is that statistically, we're above average uh, with all the other universities that are well-known top flight schools that they paid a lot more money for. And we, we not only have a higher average, but we also have three or four students always finish in the 98, 97 percentile, which says that even if you went to a really big school, spent a lot of money, you're getting a quality education in the school of business. Uh, the other thing that I think that differentiates us is that the students get a lot of ethics and Franciscan values and working with the community. So I think you're a well-rounded person. You're very empathetical. Uh, you're well-liked. You know how to make friends. And so you're not just somebody that's technically capable, but you're a well-rounded person and that you're prepared for the daily job routine that you have. So it lets you go into uh, many different areas. 
Great. And last question that admissions has that we frequently get asked. Um, Dr. Edson, I'll start with you, but again, anyone can answer. What do you think makes QU as a whole, not just even the School of Business, but as an entire college, what makes us so special? Yeah, and while we don't require participation in things outside of the classroom, we really encourage you to because we believe that you know learning takes place everywhere. So whether it's um, if you're on an athletic team or a campus organization or a student parliament or whatever, you're gaining some invaluable uh, leadership skills. Also ga gathering, you know, some teamwork skills. We have a service learning component and we had mission trips um, and, and we're all very um, excited to have COVID maybe end so these mission trips can resume. But I think students just learn a lot about themselves um, and about empathy and about how other people live when they uh, go on these mission trips or even serve locally in, in some of the, in some of the uh, Habitat for Humanity or serving food at places. But inside the classroom, um, we get to know you on an individual level. We encourage you to participate, hone your communications. We encourage you to ask questions, which is all building your communication skills, both, both formally and informally. We asked you to write. Um, I've had some past students who's, who went to work for large KPMG in Washington, DC, and they were like, yeah, we were better prepared for research because we actually did it and had to write it. And everyone was asking us because we had to do that. But um, we do strive to provide you with a quality education, education that includes not only knowledge in our fields, but knowledge in many other areas. And we encourage you to become a lifelong learner. Um, you learn things everywhere. A liberal arts education kind of stresses that. And we think that's special about us. Thank you. Yeah, I'll add one thing. After a hard day of slaving over all the accounting classes with Dr. Edson, <laughs> I have some of my students take ceramics and they, they really enjoy that, <laughs> or art history. <laughs> it, it, it's something different and it's exciting for them. So they, they get the, or they take Spanish. There's just a lot of different things you can do. It's not just uh, doing the credits and debits all the time. And I can say that because my undergraduate degrees in accounting, <laughs> I wouldn't pick on Dr. Edson if I, if I didn't have that, so. Dana, my favorite class in college was ceramics. <laughs> was it? <laughs> But you're right, it is nice when you have four accounting classes in a row to have something that is so incredibly different that it's just refreshing and um, mm -hmm. kind of enjoyable. And to back up what Dr. Edson said, you know, at a liberal arts school, um, you are very marketable because you don't just know your craft. Um, you know how to be creative and think critically and write well and speak well. And you know all those things mold you into a multifaceted person um, that of course your employers are gonna want. So um, obviously we're biased. We enjoy QU and our liberal arts education but I do think it sets people up for, um, for a great life and career. So any questions you have for us, Nolan? Or I'm sorry, Dr. Cruz, did you have one thing? Yeah, I was going to add, um, in my courses, sometimes I have students from other countries. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we can also add uh, to how uh, Quincy University is unique in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, those students can talk to you about what they eat in their countries, you know, traditions, things that, and they also add those type of experiences in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are teaching, for instance, a online courses, they can also add that. And you can see how rich those conversations mm -hmm. are when you have people from other countries also and people interested in following it. And as my colleagues say, um, you know, just having people with, with, with different values and the values that we have here at Quincy University is mm -hmm. just you. That's it. That's a great thing to add because no matter if you're online or if you are in the classroom, when your class is only 30 people deep and you know this person from another country who's teaching you so much isn't just this guy with a number who sits nine rows up from you, you know, you truly are peers when there's only 20, 30 other people in there with you, no matter if they are, um, you know, writing uh, something that you need to respond to virtually or again, you're in the classroom with them. So I really enjoy that point. Any last questions though, Nolan, that you have for these experts here? 
Um, yeah, it was brought up um, specifically a little bit earlier, but it was about specifically um, internships. I kind of wanted to ask um, exactly how that would work, like with classes and stuff is kind of what I was wondering about. Just like, because you'd actually be doing the internships while going at QU. Is that what I was hearing right? Or how does that work? I can take I can take that one for Nolan. Uh, you can do it two different ways. You can take it like your junior or senior year. It could be a part-time job. The thing about it is, is you get paid an actual salary and you get academic credit for it. So for example, you may take 12 hours of actually courses and then you can maybe take four hours of credit courses for your internship. Uh, the other way to do it is do it in your summer semester. So June, July, August, especially if you're going to travel someplace distant and uh, so again, you can either do it part-time or you can do it during the summer or you can do both. You can get up to six hours of academic credit for your internship. And of course we want, the reason we want you to pay it is that you are of value. You wanna learn about the job, but then if they're paying for it, they wanna get value out of you. So it's a real life experience. They actually set you down and have you do things that are important to them from their business perspective. So you can do either or both. I've had students that have gone home for the summer. I had one that lived in Indiana. She did a marketing internship um, at home during the summer. And when she came back to school, she actually worked remotely uh, 10 hours a week on that same job and got more credit hours that way. So you can do, you can do both. But again, it, it, it's both internships and practicum, so. And I think maybe your question, an internship is not a full-time job. You would, you would work like eight to 10 hours a week and the places you work at usually work around your schedule. And when you schedule, you try to get, you know, blocks of four hours at a time to go work. Anything else you got, Nolan? Honestly, not really anything in particular. It definitely, <laughs> I just say it's kind of crazy just thinking about even graduating just right around this corner and just coming here. It's just literally about what four months. And it's kind of crazy to think about. But well, you'll have people in your corner. You know, I'm assuming coming in as an accounting major, Dr. Edson will probably be your advisor. So um, be great to, to be able to have her kind of looking over your shoulder to make sure you're on track with things and checking in, um, especially as a first timer here at QU. Obviously not a first timer to college, but to Quincy University. So um, I think you'll, you'll have great guidance, which will be good for you. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Um, I, I'm very appreciative of all of our experts for lending us um, their time tonight. Uh, again, we will be recording this and it'll be on our YouTube page in the next couple of days. So if you do want a refresher, please find it there, uh, Quincy underscore you. Um, and go Hawks. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.